because we've got to be able to remember things that we learned. Okay, so it says find the inverse. So algebraically, this is given an equation. If we're asked to algebraically find the inverse, what's our first step? Split. Switch x and y. So we have 2y squared minus 3. Then we solve for y. My first step will be add 3 to both sides. x plus 3 equals 2y squared. Then what will we do? Divide by 2. And then we have, then what will we do? Square root both sides. And since there was no restrictions, we would have y is equal to plus and minus the square root of x plus 3 over 2. That's an acceptable answer, but a lot of you are really good at saying, well, it's not an appropriate answer if we want to be technical, because this is technically the square root of 2 on bottom, and you're right, you would not see that written on a on a um, end of like level of test, or you wouldn't really see it on an ACT for sure. They would then rationalize the denominator, so they would write this as y is equal to the square root of 2, they put parentheses x plus 3, because square root of 2 is multiplied to all that, right? And then over 2. That's how they'd write it. And then plus or minus. So this would be not a function unless we restricted the domain, right? Think of a quadratic reflected over the y equals x axis. It would make it not a function, right? Make it like this. You could. You might see it that way, too. You don't have to, but you could see it that way. Okay, so just a reminder of how to find an inverse this way. So if you're given a set of x, y points, how do we find the inverse? Good, switch x and y. That will be the inverse. So this would be negative 2, 3, negative 5, 4, negative 1, 5. Very good. That would be considered the inverse relation. So the reason we did that is because we're going to be dealing with inverse trig functions today, and they work the same way. Inverses for all functions works the same. Okay, so I really like this lesson. It's not super hard, I don't think. It's honestly a lot of the unit circles. So can everybody grab a unit circle? You're going to be using it tons. Like I literally look at my unit circle for this. Okay, so when we're going to first focus in on sine inverse. So I'm only going to show you this once. Um, if we were to algebraically find sine inverse, our first step is just like anything else. So starting with y is equal to sine of x. If I said find the inverse, uh, inverse function, you do switch x and y, x equals sine of y, and you don't even need to take notes on this. I'm just showing you algebraically where this comes from. Now to undo sine, the only way to undo sine, because y is trapped inside of sine, the only way to undo sine is sine inverse. So we would take the sine inverse of both sides of the equation. So inverse sine and sine undo each other, leaving me with y equals sine inverse of x. So that's what we're going to be focusing in on, is y equals sine inverse of x today. Yeah, that's a bullet point. So what we're going to look at first is just graphing sine, and then we're going to graph the inverse function. So graphing y is equal to sine of x, let's just graph um, one cycle here. Over 1, 2, 3, 4 would put us at 2 pi, 0. Right? Pi. Wait, over 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 pi, halfway between is pi, correct? That's not 0. That is pi halves. You guys already know how to graph sine, so you don't even need to be graphing this. This is 3 pi halves. We go up one, down one. So really, you should just be watching this part. So let's graph. I'm going to change to blue. So remember that sine starts at the 0, correct? Everybody, zero up to the max, down to the zero, down to the min, back to the zero. So notice we have these x, y points. We have zero, zero. Look, zero, zero. I've just already drawn them out for you. Zero, zero over pi halves of one over pi up zero over three pi halves down one over two pi up zero. Now I just graph one point further this way into the negative direction, just for fun. So if we were to graph another thing of sine, it would look like that, right? Down, up, and end up back here. So it's going down, so right here it's going to be at the min. If we were going to graph another one, and it'll look something like that. So down here is negative pi halves. So at negative pi halves, we're at negative one. 
So to his, um, and if I said find the inverse of sine, you would just switch those x y points. So now instead of negative pi halves negative one, we have negative one negative pi halves. This might be helpful right here to start taking notes. Then after that, we would have 0, 0. We'd switch x and y, right? This is how inverses work. We're just switching x and y. So we'll have 1 pi halves. We'll have 0 pi, switching x and y. We'll have negative 1, 3 pi halves. And 0, 2 pi. So... We're going to graph this out with plot points. So now our x and x is between negative 1 and 1. Notice. So on my xy chart, I'm going to go negative 1 and 1. Here's 0, obviously, for x. So these are our new inputs. And our outputs now, our y values, are now these. So here's 0. So this would be, let's do like up high halves up pi, up 3 pi halves, up 2 pi. So now I'm going to do some in the negative direction, so down negative pi halves. And let's plot some points here. We're just plotting points for our inverse. So we can plot more points than this, but these are just some starting points so that we can kind of get an idea of what sine inverse is looking like. So negative 1, up pi Sorry, negative 1 down pi half. So go negative 1, we graph x, y. So negative 1, negative pi half. There's our first point. Over 0, 0. It's going to be like coming up. Then over 1 up pi half. So over 1 up pi half. Over 0, again, up pi. Yikes. We just became not a function. Correct, everybody? Then we just become not a function. Okay, yeah. well, let's just keep graphing. And then over negative 1, we've already put negative 1 once. You can't put it again, but it makes it not a function. So we can, but it will just be not a function. So we're there. At negative 1 up 3 pi halves and over 0 up 2 pi. So it's finishing off looking like this. So we can keep graphing points, and it's just going to look like this. Correct, everybody? So what we're going to end up doing is saying we want our sine inverse to be a function, not not a function. So what we're going to be doing for sine is we're going to be restricting our domain to only over a certain interval. So sine inverse, to make it a function, I'm going to say that again. We've got to restrict our sine so that we are only graphing what will make it a function. So I just want you to notice. Look. Look back at sine. Oops, I wanted to do yellow, but I kind of already went with red. So, Okay, from this interval for x, from negative pi halves to pi halves, we're reaching down from negative 1 up to 1. Will that cover, so negative 1, 0, 1. Won't any other sine value anywhere on here be between negative 1 and 1? Yeah, so our interval that we're going to graph for sine inverse is only going to be the interval from negative pi halves up to pi halves so that we have a function when we graph the inverse. So when I say we're graphing the inverse of sine, that is true, and we're only going to graph it over the interval from negative pi halves to pi halves so that we'll keep it a function. Because look, if I erase all this stuff, now it's a function, correct everybody? Right, it doesn't recross back through. So that's what we're going to graph. This is the only thing we're going to graph for sine inverse is on that interval. So I, I, I remember that I always had the question, well, why that interval? Why that particular interval? So here's why. So hopefully I can make sense of this. Um, if we're graphing normal old sine, do you see how this takes care of all my positive values? Um, and then right here takes care of all my negative values. So that's like the place where the first place where the origin hits that it's all negatives and positives. So like a lot of people are like, well, what if you would have done that and a different or a different interval that just oh, I explain that. This is the first interval. That's what I'm gonna say. This is the first interval. Here's the origin over the origin that covers all the values. Does that make better sense? Yes. From here to here, if it crosses through the origin is the only place where it covers all values for negative and positive. So that's just the interval it uses. Okay, so 
In a better picture here, this is what we're looking at for sine inverse. So we, I just drew, redrew a sine inverse. It's going to look like this. So our domain for sine inverse is between the domain of x values. Our, our, our domain is going to be from negative 1 up to 1 for sine inverse. And our range for sine inverse is going to be between negative pi halves and pi halves. Domain for sine inverse is between negative 1 and 1. That is the only thing we can plug in. It's numbers between negative 1 and 1. And range is going to, all of our outputs, all of our answers are going to be on an interval from negative pi halves to pi halves. So what I said down here is um, I said for inverse sine, we can only input values that are between negative 1 and 1. So we can't find sine inverse of 2 because 2 is outside of the domain. You see how that's plugging in 2? It's an x input. We can only input into sine inverse values between negative 1 and 1. So would negative 0.5 be okay? Yes. Isn't negative 0.5 in that interval? You get what I'm saying? So anything outside of that interval, when you're getting a calculator, if you type in sine inverse of 2, it'll say error. And that's because 2 is not an input we can put in. It's not in our domain. Does everybody understand now? Yeah. Wow, isn't that cool? Now, here's the interesting part. So we know range is actually our output. You put something in, you get an answer out, correct? Output. So all of our answers are going to be in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 4. But really, when I say quadrant 4, I really mean negative quadrant 1. So... Because our range goes between pi halves and negative pi halves, all of our answers are going to be either in this quadrant or this quadrant. However, because we just scrapped it, right? We just said that this is our output. So, what? Oh, yes. So, we cannot find, our, all of our answers for sine inverse are going to have to be answers that are on this interval. So, I'll get to it in a second. It's going to make more sense. But we also got to think of this as more as, instead of quadrant 4, it's negative quadrant 1. So see how this is up pi 6? This is down pi 6, right, everybody? This is what we're going to call negative pi 6. This is negative pi fourths. This is negative pi thirds. And this is not 3 pi halves on sine inverse. It's negative pi halves. Does everybody understand? Okay, awesome. If you understand that, then you're going to get what I'm saying. So it says, and I'm going to explain what inverse sine means in just a second. So for inverse sine, we will always give our answers on the interval from negative pi halves to pi halves. So if I said to you, find the sine inverse of negative square root of 2 over 2, we, it'll be pi fourths. So everybody look. Do you see how, I'm sorry, it'll be negative pi fourths is where I meant to put. So sine inverse, and we'll get to it. Maybe we should come back to that when you understand what sine inverse really means. But anyways, look right here. You see how this is neg This is sine is y, correct? So our answer would have been negative pi force. Okay, so I think this is what always gets people. They're like, what does the sine inverse really mean? I literally reword it like this every time I go to find sine inverse. And if you do it, it'll make more sense. So sine inverse, sine negative 1 of x, really means the exact same thing as arc sine. So as you can see it either way, and we are going to be seeing it both. So sine inverse means arc sine of x. Sine inverse of x is the same thing as arc sine of x. And how we read arc sine of x is literally arc sine of x means, and I reword it like this every time I say to myself, arc sine means what is the angle whose sine is that value? So arc sine means what's the angle that sine is that given value? <laughs> So you might want to write that down. That literally helps me so much. I always have to reword it. When I see sine inverse, I say to myself, so what is the angle that has that sine value? I reword it every time. Instead of saying arc sine, I re-say it to myself in these terms. Arc sine means what is the angle whose sine is that particular x value? And once again, all of our answers for sine inverse are going to be on the interval from pi halves to negative pi halves. Yep, so an answer would be 45 degrees. And we're going to do this first example. So it's going backwards of this. So look, everybody, if you under, you've got to understand this back and forth. So if I say to you find sine of pi force, that's not finding an inverse. It's literally what is sine of pi force. So isn't that what's the y value at pi force? 
So the answer would be root 2 over 2. What you're doing for inverse is you're literally going backwards. So this says sine inverse. So what this means is what is the angle whose sine is square root of 2 over 2? What's the angle whose sine value is square root of 2 over 2? Sine square root of 2 over 2. Isn't that this? What's the angle? Pi fourths. You see how that's just going backwards? Or 45 degrees? Yeah. Same thing. Yes. So you could write either or, and if it wants it one specific way, it'll say give your answer in radians or give your answer in degrees. Everybody see how it's just going backwards? Okay, awesome. So let's just start practicing some of these. So if you want to write them down, I'll give you a second. Okay, let's answer this. So arc sine of negative a half. What angle sine value is negative a half? Locate negative a half. Isn't that this value? Yep. What? Yeah, but that's not in our domain, right? So we know that our answer has to be from pi halves to negative pi halves. So isn't that the same thing as negative pi six? So we would say negative pi six. Or that is the same thing as negative 30 degrees. Either answer. Pretty easy, right? So, sine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2. That means what angle has the sine value of square root of 3 over 2? Pi thirds. Positive, so it's pi thirds. Now look, there was another answer where that was true. Right here, 2 pi thirds. But that wasn't in the domain. And that wasn't in our... Range, I mean. That wasn't in our, I always say that wrong. That wasn't in our available output. So we have to put our answers in the correct Wait, interval. Is that, is that, Arc sine. Okay, sine inverse of 2. Is that an available input? That's what you should always ask yourself. No, no right? The inputs have to be values between negative 1 and 1 for inverse sine. So we just, we can't do it. So, can't. This would say error in your calculus. If you try to type it in, even try it if you're interested. Okay, a couple more examples. Sine inverse of negative square root of 3 over 2. What angle has the sine value negative square root of 3 over 2? Negative pi thirds. Or negative 60 degrees. True. All right. Now, careful because we can't get these confused. So look at the difference. This is sine inverse. This says what sine... So it says sine of theta, what sine of theta equals negative square root of 3 over 2? So when is theta, when is the sine value going to be negative square root of 3 over 2? This one's just finding the, the value, the theta. Negative square root of 3 over 2? Negative, or, uh, but we would say, so this one we could do any values, right? Sine. Isn't sine never ending input for sine? Right? This is regular old sine. So we would say negative 60 wouldn't be incorrect, but what I'm going to say is, isn't 5 pi thirds my answer technically? So 5 pi thirds. But here's the thing, and we're going to get more in depth with this later, but any time I hit 5 pi thirds is really where it's going to be that value, right? That sine value. So I would say 5 thirds plus 2 pi n, which means I can add 2 pi as many times as I want, and it's always that sine value is always going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. There's another place we're missing something. Where else does sine equal negative square root of 3 over 2? 4 pi thirds. So also 4 pi thirds plus 2 pi n. So you just got to make sure you're asking yourself, because you could... We could end up any time I hit there. So really it's plus or minus 2 pi n is what I could say. You know what I mean? That's getting really technical. We could add 360 or subtract 360 and end up in the same spot. And that will always be our sine value there. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, let's go back to arc sine. I only wanted to show you that once. Sine inverse of, so it says when is the angle, when is our angle of sine negative 1? Sine is y, so negative 90 degrees. Good. Negative pi halves or negative 90 degrees. You guys totally get it. Any questions on that? Okay, let's go to answer those two for me. Well, 
But the second one always confuses people. Plus 2 pi n, because it's saying when does theta, when is our sine value negative square root of 3 over 2? And that happened here and here, correct? Yep, anytime we hit there. So plus 2 pi, the amount of times we want to add 2 pi. Good. Yes. This is just sine. Is it sine domain, all real numbers? No, this is saying when is, so we're not, so we're saying, we're asking there is multiple solutions for this one. There's not just only one solution, if that makes sense. Um, but there's many answers true for that. This one doesn't have a restricted domain, so there is multiple answers. Okay, and we're going to have a lesson later where we get even more involved with that, but not today. Okay, so sine, when is the angle sine value one half? What's the angle whose sine value is a half? Pi 6. Right? Yeah. Hey, the angle whose sine value is pi 6. Okay, wait a minute. This is where it gets confusing for some people. And even I catch myself sometimes saying, wait, what a, wait, wait a minute. So think about this one. Um, input has to be between negative 1 and 1, correct? So this one, we can't use our unit circle. We would have to use our calculator. Now we can, pi 6, type it into your calculator. How you divide by 6? What number is that? Let's see if it's in our domain. 0.5. So it is in our domain because our domain for sine inverse is between negative 1 and 1. So it's about 0.5. So this would be one where you would use your calculator because we can't use our unit circle. Remember, this is going backwards, right? So looking right here, so this is our input. We don't know, like, 0.6. So right here, do you see how... That over 0.5 would be somewhere right here, correct? But this isn't our angle measure here, though. Remember, this is going the other way. I used to get confused with the same thing. So remember, this is at, this is our graph. This is our function right here. So we're plugging in roughly 0.5, right? In we're getting out something up here, right? And it's going to be in radians. Our output's going to be in radians, so this is one where we would just type it into our calculator. There isn't a special place on our unit circle for that. So anyways, what do you get? So you would just type in inverse sine, oh, yeah, inverse sine of pi divided by 6, and what do we get? What is it? Um, just make sure your calculator's in radian mode, because... We're typing in something in a radian, so it should be a degree, I um, mean, sorry, yeah, it should come, what, what, I'm sorry, it shouldn't be a degree measure, it should be, so what did we get? You, oh, we already did it. Right. Yeah, 0.55. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to confuse. All good? Okay, let's do cosine. Here we go. So we're going to graph one cycle for cosine. So we're going over. You don't need to graph cosine. One, two, three, four. That puts us at two pi. Half ways pi, pi halves, three pi halves, and then up at one and negative one. Okay, so cosine looks like the upward, it starts at the max. Zero, min. Zero max. I didn't spread that out very pretty. That's cosine. So I have these points. So now to find the inverse, you'll want to graph this. And you actually won't even have to reproduce the graph. Uh, graph like, there's a good chance, like, you don't have to reproduce the graph. We were, I'm doing this so that you can see where it comes from. Okay, so we switch X and Y. So that'd be over 1, up 0, over 0, up pi, halves, over negative 1, up pi, over zero up three pi halves and over one up two pi. So we will, you probably will start graphing this with me, cosine inverse. So now look at our domain. Our inputs are now between negative one and one. Outputs are like these values. So zero up pi halves up pi. Three pi halves, two pi, up 
pie. That wasn't our lunch bell, right? Okay. Let's grab those points. So we go over one up zero. Boom. Over zero up pi halves. Over negative one up pi. Yeah. 30? Yeah. Okay, so we're finishing graphing. So we're at the point now where we're graphing. We went over um, negative one up pi and then over zero up three pi halves. Oh, there's our first issue where all of a sudden now we're not a function again. And then over one up two pi. So if we were to graph this, it looks like that. And it's not a function. So we're going to just restrict it. But remember, like we could draw it, it would be keep going, right? Keep in mind it would keep going. But we're going to restrict the domain of cosine so that it is a function. So we're going to restrict it. Look, if I erase all this stuff up to there, you see how over this interval, how it's a function, right? So we're going to restrict our domain on cosine up to pi. And here's why that works. Do you see if I highlight it in yellow, these, this is up to pi. Do you see how it has all the values? One, zero, and negative one. So do you see how that's always going to be all of the, those, all of our other answers for cosine will fall in that zero, one, or negative one, right? Everybody seeing what I'm saying? So if we restrict our domain and say we're just going to graph cosine inverse for cosine over the interval from zero to pi, then we'll be golden. We will be a function. So that's what cosine, so I just have that written a little bit prettier. This is what cosine looks like. It wasn't that pretty, but... Yep, so this one, cosine's different than sine. And so sine is our outputs are going to be between for sine, negative pi halves to pi halves. For cosine, it's going to be from zero to pi. All of our outputs are going to be from zero to pi. So I better, uh, let's write it in. So our domain for cosine inverse is from negative one to one, just like with sine inverse. So we can only input things into cosine inverse that are values between negative one and one. Then we get something out. That's our y-axis. And all of our answers for cosine inverse are going to be from 0 up to pi. So this time, all of our answers are going to be in quadrant 1 and 2, and only those. So notice sine was up here and down here, quadrant 1 and negative quadrant 1, but cosine's the top half. So sine's the right half, cosine's the top half. So I already said that. All of our inputs for cosine will be between negative 1 and 1. All of our answers for the inverse cosine will be from 0 to pi, no matter what. So let's answer these questions. Remember, you just read it as the angle whose cosine is this value. So everybody using your unit circle, it says, what's the arc cosine? So what's the angle whose cosine is square root of 2 over 2? Cosine's x. Pi force. Or that's the same thing, right, as 45 degrees. It just depends on which answer they're looking for. Now it says well, arc cosine. This means arc cosine. So find the angle whose cosine is negative square root of 2 over 2. That value, right? Three, five fourths? What? Oh, it does need to see, huh? Good point. Okay, sorry, once again, re thank you. Refocusing. Cosine is x, so, and it's got to be the answer is 3 pi fours. Or the same thing as 135 degrees. I want you to notice, isn't this also where cosine, right here, isn't this also where cosine, the angle whose cosine is negative root 2 over 2? But that's not in our available output, so we would only put this answer. Everybody's good? Okay. Yeah. Answer this one. The angle whose cosine is negative 1. Remember cosine's x. What's that angle where the cosine's negative 1? Pi. Very good. What's the angle whose cosine is negative 1 half? Two pi thirds. Very good. We are getting this. It's pretty straightforward. Very good. All right. And is this an available one? Can we do it? The angle whose cosine is pi. Yeah. No, that's not an input that 
value we can put in. Remember, input has to be between negative 1 and 1. What is pi? Well, we're really doing the arc cosine of 3.14. Is that an input we can put in between negative 1 and 1? No. So that would say error if you try to type cosine inverse of pi in your calculator. It will say error. It's not in the domain. So can't do. No can do. <laughs> no. Even try putting it in your calculator and it will say error. Okay, now inverse tangent, once again, I will not ask you to reproduce the graphs, really. Sometimes they're helpful. Um, like, like, like I said, sometimes these graphs are helpful, but I probably won't ask you to reproduce them. But as long as you understand the intervals for inputs and outputs. So everybody, I've already graphed out what tangent looks like for you because we're just going to get right into it. So I switch x and y. And this is what tangent inverse looks like right here. So notice my domain is growing left and right forever. So for tangent inverse, you can literally plug in anything. Any number for tangent inverse is available to find. You can plug any value in. But our output, our range, is going to be in answers on an interval from negative pi halves to pi halves. So looking at this, if we reflect it and whatnot. So negative pi halves and pi halves, our range, our outputs are going to be between negative pi halves and pi halves. Not including, the difference with tangent is, not including negative pi halves and pi halves, because that asymptote means it's not going to be that value. So at those values, if that was our output, it would be undefined. We, I mean, it's just undefined at, with those values, so. Instead of brackets, notice there's parentheses. That means not including, right? For range. Everybody see, notice that? Not parentheses. So sign it included it, tangent not included. Okay. So with tangent, we're once again, just like with sign, dealing with quadrant, because notice, look at our outputs. They're between negative pi halves and pi halves. So just like with sign, all of our answers are going to be in quadrant one and negative quadrant one. So we can put any value in to tangent, but our answers are going to be on an interval from negative pi halves to pi halves. But if we're finding the inverse tangent and we get these, like we're getting these, it's going to be undefined. So. Good question. So these values, it will never be that range of that value. It's never going to cross that asymptote. So that's why those values aren't included in our output. Our ranges. So if I said to you, find the tangent inverse of um, that, that would be undefined because that's the negative pi halves, right? Which isn't in our output. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's answer. The, oh, but I want to just make sure that we got some good algebra down. We should have these memorized just before we get started so we don't have to think so hard. So everybody, first of all, let's do some algebra. Remember that tangent's y divided by x. So let's figure out the tangent of 30 degrees. So y divided by x, 1 half divided by a root 3 over 2. Let's do some algebra. Flip the second and multiply. So won't that come out to be root 3 over 3. So tangent of 30 degrees, you've got to have that memorized root 3 over 3 so that it's quick. So what's the tangent of, if I ask you right now, what is the tangent of negative 30 degrees, you'd say? Negative root 3 over 3, right? Okay, tangent of 60 degrees, go up to 60 degrees, do y divided by x, that's root 3 over 2 divided by half, flip the second and multiply, we get root 3. So tangent of 60 degrees is root 3, so tangent of negative 60 degrees is negative root 3, right, everybody? So tangent of 30 is that, tangent of 60 is that. Just remember that. Okay, here we go. Find the tangent inverse, which we remember that that just means, what's the angle where the tangent is the root 3 over 3? We just did it. 30 degrees. 30 degrees, correct everybody? So that would be pi 6 or 30 degrees. Okay, arc tangent means what's the angle whose tangent is going to be negative root 3 over 3? There's the positive root 3 over 3. Negative pi 6. Does everybody see why that is? No questions? Are you sure? Okay. Or negative 30 degrees. 
Okay. Tangent inverse of negative 1. So that means when's the angle? When is, what's the angle where our tangent will be negative 1? Just remember, it's, we're going to call it, here's positive 1. So it'll be negative pi force, right? Negative 45 degrees. Does that make sense? Our outputs can be that, but it's just you got to name it right. you got to say it right. It's not 7 pi force. It's negative pi force. Does that make sense, everybody? Good question. So negative 45 degrees or negative pi force. So the angle whose tangent is 0. Now remember, tangent's y divided by x. It's not that, right? It's not that. It's 0, right? 0 divided by 1 is 0. So our answer is the angle would be 0. Now that's the only answer, right? Because that's the only angle in the, from negative, our output, sorry, our output, yeah, is 0. Because that's on the interval from negative 5 halves to 5 halves. It can be both, sorry, 0 radians or 0 degrees. Okay, so I just want you to look at these compared because this is kind of, if you have this in your head, this thing, then you're really good. So this is the graph for sine. Our outputs are going to be on from negative pi halves to pi halves. So that's the right side, correct everybody? And then cosine is the odd one out. So cosine is the, your outputs will be from 0 to pi or the top half of the unit circle. And then tangent is the same as sine. It's going to be the right side of the graph. Yes. Um, just because of the way we worked out and restricted our domain to make it a function. Remember back to that? Where we restricted it to be this specifically so that it's a function. So that's why it never continues because we're restricting original sine, original cosine, original tangent over this interval. We're only graphing the inverse of that interval so that it's a function, so that these are functions. Right. Yes, if you put your answer in quadrant three, it's, you're putting it where it wasn't a function. Good point. Good point. Hey, here we go. So now we're going to put multiple things together. We're almost to the end of the lesson here. It's the last few things. So now we're putting multiple things together. What you're going to do is literally just work from the inside out. Work from the inside out. So you'll be asking yourself, what is this? Now what is this? So... I have my unit circle up just to help us. So it says, what's the cosine of 2 pi thirds? So let's just answer the in. So it says, this whole thing says, the angle of cosine is the cosine of 2 pi thirds. Our cosine is cosine of 2 pi thirds. Let's just work from the inside out. Wait, what? We're going to just work from the inside out. Like, we're just evaluating multiple things here. Or, yeah. So what is the cosine of 2 pi thirds? Locate 2 pi thirds. Cosine is? Negative a half. So we're really finding cosine inverse of negative one half. Now you'd say to yourself, what is my output for cosine inverse? The top half of the unit circle, correct? So now it's asking us, what's the angle whose cosine is negative a half? Two pi thirds. Didn't that just undo it? Yeah. But that won't always come out true because of the in the outputs availability for cosine inverse. So this one did come out the same. They undid each other. But that won't always, and you'll see an example in a second where our domain or outputs get messed up. Nope, only two isn't the only place for cosine inverse is the top half of the graph, right? Remember? You gotta remember that. Yeah. So cosine inverse only output is two pi thirds. And tangent to the right side. Okay, here we go. Let's work from the inside out. So it says find a cosine of 4 pi thirds. So 4 pi thirds is? What is the cosine? Good, so we have cosine inverse of negative 1 half. Now, this is an example of where it wouldn't be right if we just undid them. Because the cosine inverse means where's the angle? Co uh, where is the a what's the angle whose cosine is negative a half? It's got to be, our output's got to be on the top, so 2 pi thirds. It's got to be on the top of the unit circle, our output for cosine. Does everybody see how that one did not just undo each other? 
So that's why I don't even ever just, I never assume, I just literally work from the inside out. Look at this one. Cosine inverse on dip cosine, we get two pi thirds. Can we just say that our answer was four pi thirds? No. No. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, let's work from the inside out. The angle whose cosine is negative root 2 over 2. Locate it. Cosine's the top half, guys. Cosine inverse. 3 pi 4, so right? Cosine's x. So we're finding the cosine of 3 pi 4. What's our answer going to be? Negative square root of 2 over 2. So notice that one did just undo each other. And if you're ever going this way, a cosine of the cosine inverse that will undo each other in the proper places. Because you're going to find the proper cosine inverse, right? And then the cosine of that, of course, is going to be that. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Just work from the inside out. So arc sine is sine of 3 pi half. So we work from the inside out. Let's evaluate sine of 3 pi halves. So we're doing, going to be doing arc sine. What is the sine of 3 pi halves? Locate 3 pi halves. What is sine? Negative 1, right? So now we're asking ourselves, so we just found sine of 3 pi halves is negative 1. So now we're saying, what's the angle where the sine is negative 1? Don't say 3 pi halves. That's not in the available outputs. Negative pi halves, right? That's in the available output of sine. The right side of the graph. Does everybody see how this is working? For sure? Okay. Here we go. Tangent of arc tangent of negative 5. So let's think about this. This means the angle whose tangent is negative 5. So that's going to be some angle, correct? Some angle. Now if we find the tangent of that angle, won't it be negative 5? Because they could do brackets or parentheses. So this is tangent of arc tangent. Those ones are okay to just undo each other. You're going to find the angle, and then you're going to go back and go find the tangent. Won't it be negative 5? Everybody? Okay, so my answer is negative 5. Yep, same thing. That will undo each other perfectly. Because mm -hmm. you would find the correct angle. And now here's the other thing. Um, let me say it one more time. Dylan. Don't we know for inverse tangent we can put in anything? Remember back to the tangent function? Let me go back to it. Look at tangent. Can't our input be anything for tangent? So I'm saying, okay, so the tangent at 5. So we're over here at 5, right? It'll be that angle, whatever that angle is, and then you go backwards. Now what's the tangent of that? So negative 5. Okay. Our sine is sine of 5 thirds. We're from the inside out. So sine of pi is 5 pi thirds. Sine is y guys. Negative root 3 over 2. So now we're finding the arc sine of that, which sine, arc sine's outputs have to be on that interval, this half of the graph. So what would my answer be? Of 1, 2, that is? Positive pi thirds, isn't that negative pi thirds? So we found sine of 5 pi thirds. Where's 5 pi thirds? Right there? So our sine is a uh, y value. So we have that. Now we're finding the angle whose sine, what's the angle whose sine value is negative root 3 over 2? Isn't that back at 5 pi thirds? But that's not in the output. 5 pi thirds is an available output for sine inverse, remember? So we would call that instead of 5 pi thirds, we're going to call it negative pi thirds. Because this is pi halves and negative pi halves. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. So remember, it's back to that same thing. Our outputs are always going to be, this is the quadrant 1, and this is quadrant 4, but it's really called negative quadrant 1. Remember, our outputs are always going to be from 0 to negative pi halves. Does that make sense? We restricted our outputs to be so that it's going to... We're not going to get into that. Here we go. What about this one? The cosine inverse of pi. Now remember, this means the angle whose... The angle whose cosine is pi. No. 
This one's kind of tricky. Can we do cosine and inverse of pi, guys? What's our input for cosine inverse? Negative 1 to 1. Isn't pi 3.14? So this one you can't let trick you. You say can't do it. Because we evaluate the inside first. So cosine inverse means what's the angle whose cosine is pi? Can we plug pi into cosine? Remember, cosine's inputs have to be between negative 1 and 1, right? So 3.14 is out of the domain of cosine inverse. So we can't put that in. That's an error. Okay. Okay, let's do this one. Now this one is very different. Everybody watching. So it says the tangent of arc cosine of two thirds. So is two thirds an available um, input in for cosine? So remember, cosine is between negative one and one. What's two divided by three? 2 divided by 3, point, point 6. So that's totally in our domain. But you're going to have to tackle this one differently. So what you're going to do is, what this really means is, we have an angle whose cosine is 2 thirds. So we're going to draw a triangle for this one. Here's theta. Cosine is, so here's my angle. It says the angle whose cosine is 2 thirds. So here's my angle. Our cosine of that angle is 2 thirds. Cosine is adjacent over... Adjacent over hypotenuse. So we have a 2, we have a 3. So now we need to do Pythagorean theorem and figure out this side. 3 squared, everybody? 3 squared minus 2 squared. 9 minus 4 is 5. Square root of 5. Okay, so we now can find the tangent of that. So tangent of the angle. So tangent is opposite over adjacent of agony. So our tangent will be, our tangent of that will be square root of 5 over 2. Did everybody see how I did that? Yeah. So if it's a fraction, you're just going to do um, a fraction that isn't on the unit circle. You're just going to draw a triangle. So it says arc sine of negative 3 fifths. So that just means the angle has a sine value of negative 3 fifths. So we're going to draw, once again, that's not, let's check if that's in our domain. It is, type in negative 3 divided by 5. You do get a decimal that is between negative 1 and 1. So we can do it. So we draw a triangle, a right triangle, we put an angle. Now the angle is negative 3 over 5. So sine is, oh heck. So opposite is negative 3, hypotenuse is 5. Everybody good? Yeah. So you'll do 5 squared minus negative 3 squared equals the other side squared. So that'll be 25 minus 9 equals question mark squared, right? 16 equals question mark squared, so question mark equals 4. So now let's answer the cosine of that angle. Cosine is, oh heck, another hour. So our answer for this would be... 4 fifths, right? 4 fifths. You're right. No, because we did find the cosine. Does that make sense? Yes. Because we're not asking for like the inverse or anything. We're just asking for cosine. Like cosine is that. Does that make sense? Okay, last one, because this one is going to give you a variable and you can't let it throw you off. Just go with the algebra. So it says... Find the sine of the arc cosine of 3x. So you just have to say to yourself, okay, arc, arc cosine means our angle has a cosine of 3x. So that's really 3x over 1. And that's not on our unit circle, so we're going to just draw a triangle here. A right triangle, here's theta. So that means our angle has a cosine of 3x. So cosine is, oh heck, another hour. So 3x will be here, and 1 will be here. So now we're going to do Pythagorean theorem to figure out this other side. So that would be 1 squared minus parentheses. 3x squared equals our other side squared. So that's 1 minus 9x squared. Correct, everybody? Yeah. Equals question mark squared. Then what would we do? Square root both sides, guys. It's just algebra. I don't let things get to you just because they're a little different. Square root both sides. Now, we know it would absolutely not be okay to just square root that, square root that. Wouldn't that be breaking the forbidden rule? Yes, so we would not do that. 
1 minus minus x squared is our final answer. That's as far as we can get. We, don't, we have an unknown. We have an unknown. Everybody understand? So now we're literally just answering what sign? Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So 1 minus 9x squared over 1, which is 1 minus 9 root, 1 minus 9x squared. That would be our sign. It was. What do you mean you can't see it? Q. Okay. So we're dealing with the arc cosine of 3x. We've already drawn that picture. That means the angle has cosine 3x. So here's my picture. Now we're asked to find cotangent. So remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent will be adjacent over opposite. So adjacent over opposite. So 3x over 1 minus 9x squared, correct? Yeah. Okay. And then we would rationalize it. So we're going to multiply by 1 minus 9x squared root 1 minus 9x squared. So on top, we multiply straight across. We have 3x root 1 minus 9x squared. And on bottom, we simply have 1 minus 9x squared. It would never be appropriate to divide across a subtraction sign, so we know that that would not be appropriate to do anything more with this. It's our final answer. So it's really not as hard as it seems. So once again, just make sure all your answers are in the output, the correct output, which for sine and tangent is in quadrant one and negative quadrant one. And then for cosine, it's the top half of the graph, zero to pi. You guys can do it. The rest of the time is yours to get on and start doing your homework. These are the problems. Not that many problems. Every other odd. So one, skip three, five, Skip seven, nine. Is that it? Yeah, right? This video is uploaded along with all the other videos for this unit, and it is very different. So if you need to go back and rewatch, some things might click that didn't the first.